In this video, I'm going to talk about what you can and cannot control on the golf course. This is uh, it's very important stuff. I like to, I like to quote by uh, the great John Wooden, the Wizard of Westwood. Wooden says, uh, do not let what you can't do interfere with what you can do. And uh, I, I took that quote and when I and talk to my students, I'll always say, do not let what you can't control interfere with what you can control. You have to uh, understand and accept all the things you cannot control on the golf course and forget about them. Just stop thinking about them. Give them no energy. Uh, for example, you can't control your swing. You can't consciously control your swing. So forget about it. Stop trying to control your swing. You can't control the ball after it leaves the club face. It's gone. There's nothing you can do. You can't control the wind or how it's going to bounce on the ground. Stop worrying about it. You know, Ben Crenshaw, the great putter, great player, uh, two-time Masters champion, great, great putter, he would, he would say, uh, you know, I'd see the line, I would get set up, I'd get the ball rolling on line, and that's all I could do. And what happened, happened. I had no control over it. I didn't worry about it. I just did the best I could. And I, I like my students to do the same thing when they're playing golf. Just do the best you can and, and give every, play every shot with a high, high degree of purpose. Every play with a high degree of purpose and stop, stop worrying about it. Uh, you can't control about what other players are thinking. Uh, you know, who knows what they're thinking. You, just, you don't need to uh, impress them by how far you hit the ball. They, they're probably wondering what you think about them. Uh, just don't worry about that or how they're playing. If you're coming to the end of the round and you're even with the player because for some reason you have to keep track of the scores. Don't let how, they, how that influence your play or your, your club you select. Don't, don't worry about that stuff. Uh, you can't halfway through a round. There's no reason to keep track of your score. Just try to play every play as, as well as you can and, and add them up uh, when you get in. Uh, you can't, uh, the, the two-foot putt you missed in the last hole, it's gone. You can't just carry it with you. The OB you hit on the first tee, it's gone. You can't let it linger with you through all 18 holes. All these things that you can't control, you just have to forget about them uh, when playing golf. You know, when playing golf, you know, they, they would always say it's about the walk. You know, it, it's, I remember the Golf in the Kingdom. I love that book. It's all about the walk. Golf's about, about the walk, about being outside, of being in the nature, being with friends, the time with friends. That's what it's all about. But you want to play well. Uh, certainly, you want to play well. So while you're over the ball, those few seconds when you're over the ball, make, creating your play, you have to focus exclusively on what you can control. You have to understand and focus on what you can control control. And I think on the golf course there's five things that, uh, that you have absolute control over. And I write, them, uh, uh, I write about them in detail in, in my book uh, Understanding Golf and I'm going to talk about them just, just quickly uh, uh, here. The first thing would be you, you get to select the play. Now the typical player, uh, the typical golfer simply on every par four or par five he hits driver off the tee. There's no thinking involved. He hits driver, he aims some, on the fairway somewhere, and he swings hard. Then on his next play, if he can't get to the green, he takes a three-wood and swings hard. If he can't get to the green, he aims the pin, no matter where the pin is, aims right at it and chronically underclubs under clubs himself and, and, and swings hard. And on, on par threes, he just aims at the pin, underclubs himself, and, and swings hard. This is the way the typical golfer plays. There's no thinking involved. But you ought to be thinking. For example, let's say the first hole is at, at Goose Creek. It's a par four, not very long, a good opening hole. Uh, and there's two fairway bunkers there and uh, guarding the uh, left and right side of, this, uh, of the fairway. Not, they're kind of tight in between them, maybe 30 yards in between them. Now let's say you're, 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 pract you're warming up before the round and you're not hitting your driver very well. Uh, you're pretty inconsistent. But today the tees are up and you go to the first tee and you say, you know, I could, I could carry those 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 bunkers maybe, but I'm not hitting my driver very well. I don't have very confidence. You know, I'm going to lay up, and I don't want to try it. It's only 30 yards between them. I don't want to lay up in between them, uh, or try to thread the needle. I'm going to lay up today. That's fine. You, that's the way golf ought to be. What you're playing on a given day. Other days you're killing the driver on the fairway. You get up the first tee, and those fairway bunkers they look like they're 100 yards out there. You just knock it right over them down the left side of the fairway, and you're fine. Other days. You leave the driver in the bag. So that's the first skill. You get to select the play. Always. You always get to uh, select the play. The second skill. 
you get to select the club. You got 14 clubs in your bag. You get to pick any one. Nobody can tell you what to pick. Let's say in the same scenario, you say, well, the driver's going to the bag. I'm taking the three-wood out. I'm going to aim at that uh, bunker down the left side of the fairway. I fade the ball, so I'm going to aim at it and fade it in the, uh, down in the fairway. You take your three-wood out and you pure it. You square the face up. It goes boom, boom, right into the bunker. It was the right play, but the wrong club. You know, you've got to select a club that if you happen to pure it, not going to happen very often, but if you do, you're still okay. And if you have an acceptable miss, and that's going to be over 95% of the time, that's going to be okay. So uh, on this particular club, a three-wood was the wrong club because it brought the bunker into play. So you ought to have played a five-wood or maybe a four-hybrid, whatever the next below that, so the bunker is not in play. Uh, that would have been the that would have been the, the correct one. That's that's the second skill uh, selecting the club. The third skill is forming the intent. You know, remember Nicholas said this is uh, fifty percent of the play. Forming a clear and positive intent, a single f clear and positive intent. It's not what you don't want to do. You know, I don't want to embarrass myself. I don't want to hook it out of bounds. I don't want to pop it up. It's 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 what you do want to do, and it's not a bunch of bunch, bunch of different things. I want to hit the ball there, but I want to keep my head still, and I'll make a complete backswing, and I don't want to... F Just one clear, positive intent. You can get better at this, and you will improve. The next skill is setup. You have to understand your swing, and you have to understand your setup. You have to master your setup. With my students, I'm always trying to get them, helping them master their setup. You want to set up the ball, and on that particular day, grip the club and set up the ball in a way that makes it easy to create the impact conditions you need to create the play you've intended to create. And the final thing you, can, you have control over is swing focus. What you intend to think about uh, when you're swinging. And you, this is an area most golfers could greatly improve on. Hopefully, you're just going to intend to make good quality contact, and you're going to let that intent control your swing. Let your body respond to that intent. So these are the uh, these are the five playing skills. These are the things you have absolute control over. So remember, there, there's ball striking skills and then there's playing skills. You're not going to improve your ball striking skills in the golf course. Whatever you got, you got. The idea is to play, to score to your potential. And, and very few golfers do. Almost Every golfer I, I, I know hits the ball a lot better than they score. But if you keep focusing on these five playing skills, you will learn to score to your potential. And uh, that's, that's the, the whole goal here. So in summary, you're going to uh, accept and you're going to stop thinking about all the things you can't control. You know, your scores in the last hole, what your score might be, or what other players are doing, or what other players are thinking, or where the ball might go after all that stuff you're, you're going to forget about. And then you're going to focus on the five skills, the five things you can effectively control on every play. Uh, if you can do that, and you can, you can certainly become better at it. Uh, you will be a far better golfer, and your scores will drop immediately.